So we have a lovely bottle of hibiki here, or hibiki, however you prefer, potato, potato. Um, so this is a Japanese blended whiskey uh, composed of malt whiskey, we assume from Yamazaki and Hakushu. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a Suntory, it's a Suntory brand, isn't mm, it? <laughs> yes, you'd assume they would use their own distillery. Yamazo uh, Yamazaki Hakushu and what's the uh, third one? Cheetah, Cheetah, we assume is the name of the grain whiskey. Oh, is that, that the would, grain whiskey? That would go into it. Um, yeah, it's ex it is extraordinary because unlike in in Scotland, in Scotland where the uh, the the various um, brand owners uh, trade mm. uh, they swap um, yes. reciprocate casks. So if you've got a blend and a, and a distillery, and I've got a blend and a distillery, I'll go to you and I'll say, mm. I want you to fill for me a hundred casks this year. Yep. And then you say, okay, well, I'll, I'll take a hundred casks of your, your whiskey. And so, so money doesn't change hands. Yes. It's just reciprocation. Mm. But in Japan, they don't reciprocate. They, 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 I mean, until recently, I mean, there's now been a, a, a burgeoning of Japanese mm. distilleries as, as, as all over the world, really. Yeah. Yeah. And the, um, but the, the, the two main companies was um, uh, Suntory, this one, and um, Nika, yeah. Um, and so, and they didn't trade, so far as okay. I'm aware. I don't think they ever trade, okay. traded. So these distilleries, they can produce all sorts of different styles of malt whiskey. Mm. And Chita, for grain whiskey, you say, I don't know whether they do many different styles of grain, but they probably do. Yeah, and I they... think it's, for those who are sort of new to Japanese whiskey, I think to draw parallels with, with Scotch, for me, Yamazaki is uh, in some ways inspired by Macallan. They often use sherry casks, produce quite a fruity spirit, I suppose you could say. Hakushu is um, produced in a much more sort of mountainous, colder area of Japan, and often their whiskies have a slight smokiness to it. Um, oh, yeah. So I yeah, think they're yeah. similar in some ways to something like Highland Park, perhaps, yeah. for Morkney. So two diff quite distinct single malt components, obviously added to the fairly neutral cheetah grain spirit to yeah. create a lovely balanced uh, whiskey such as hibiki. Um, so this, well, well, from my yeah. experience, has always been very delicate, very elegant. You know, all the words you think of when you think of Japanese style, Japanese yeah. production, um, are almost encapsulated in, in hibiki. It's a very elegant bottle. Yeah, it's a stunning one. So the, uh, the bottle itself has 24 sides to it, which represent the, I think it's the 24 phases of lunar Calendar, is that right? I think yeah. so. There's a huge amount of attention to detail. Yeah. As you say, it's an absolute um, stunning bottle, which is the star of the Lost in Translation film. Um, oh, yes, believe, that's yeah. right. Yes. A few, few yes. cameo appearances. Yeah. In there. But it's, yeah, it's really refined, really yeah. delicate, yeah. really balanced. So. Well, I have tasted it, but I've, have, I've tasted very, very little mm. Nabiki. And so it'll be very interesting. Yeah. It's got good colour. Very good colour. This one does not have an age statement on it. Which strength? Is the strength, oh, it's on the back, annoyingly. I imagine it's 43%. This so is the Hibiki Japanese Harmony uh, bottling. So no age stated. Um, yeah, the, the, I was reading that, that Hibiki means resonance. Okay. And really the, the, the best sort of translation for that into English is um, harmony. Mm. What, they, what, they, what they, they, they proudly seek is um, a harmony. Okay. The the um, so we'll see we'll see. Yeah, and I suppose it's a great word to describe describe a blended whiskey. Yeah, um, yeah. So back home we have the the, the woven brand, which yeah, I quite yeah, think yeah. feels fits in very nicely with blends. Yeah. So on the nose, does it smell? It's very mild. Harmonious. Very mild. Very very mild. It's really not giving anything away on the nose. No, it's it's faintly fragrant. That's all hmm. I would say. You know, sort of I mean, sort of sort of floral fa fragrant. Yeah, it does feel quite, I don't know, quite timid on the nose. I've had older yep, yep, hibikis, yep. which are very lively and quite, you know, quite exciting to nose in a way. It's very fruity and quite evocative. But this one is a bit more, a bit more subdued. And I think I'm getting a trace of, um, of chocolate. Mm. And it's, kind of, it's like cooking chocolate or rather drinking chocolate, the, you know, the powdered, sure. powdered yeah, chocolate. Yeah. That will give it a try. Sweet, mm. sweet, sweet, sweet. Chocolate in the in the in the in the kind of aftertaste. Mm. There is a little bit of um, 
a sort of sprinkling of spice across the tongue. In, again, in, in, in retrospect. Yep. Um, so it's, it's got a liveliness to it. But it's, 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 it is incredibly well balanced. It's you know? very, yeah, very well balanced. I would say, I mean, I don't know, but I'd imagine that the malt component of this blend isn't, you know, maybe 50% at most. For me, it tastes quite perhaps grain dominant. Not that that's a bad thing, it just tastes very light and very elegant mm. and subtle. Mm. Um, mm. All, all good words, light, elegant, subtle. Mm. The, um, I mean, it's the very opposite of challenging. The, the Japanese whiskey, I think, is very, very pure. And therefore, dare I say it, um, I think for me lacks, lack, lack, lacks character. Yeah, I think Scotch whiskey often, I find particularly for older bottlings from perhaps the 70s, the 80s, they're full of, you know, whether it's idiosyncrasies or quirks yeah. or you know, arguably imperfections. That's yeah, what yeah, makes yeah. the whiskey memorable, which makes yeah. it an experience. Um, that, that's absolutely feels, right. Mm. It's just, it really works. It's, yeah, I mean, it's faultless. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. motor cars, electronics, you know, the, the, uh, they're, they're, they're utterly reliable and, yep. and beautifully made, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously Japanese um, in Japan have been making whiskey for, you know, since pretty much the early... 1923. 20s, yeah, 1920s. It's very, you know, they know what they're doing. They've had plenty of time to experiment and, you know, learn their craft with yeah. blending and cask types. It's the cl- closest in style to, mm-hmm. to, to Scotch, Scotch whiskey. Um, and, of course, the secrets of distilling were brought for... What, Masataka Takatsuru yes. yeah. um, came to, to Scotland in 1919 to do a little bit of what we would call industrial espionage, but it was completely above board. <laughs> yeah, young, uh, young work experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> young chemist and, the, uh, yeah. and went back. And he went to Shinzero Tori, who's the, the, uh, the, the founder of uh, Sun Tori, um, yeah. and, and effectively built Yamasaki mm. Distillery for him in the, in the mid-1920s. Yeah. And so it's very much on the Scottish model, but the, they just take it to a different level. Um, of purity, I yeah. think, really. Yeah, and no, I think purity is a great word. Obviously, the name of this whiskey, Japanese Harmony, exactly. isn't very, yeah. it's very fitting. It's very, very harmonious. Um, it's very, very easy to drink. Yeah, I think for those looking for, for a challenging dram, something to take their breath away. Don't go there. Don't go for this one. But for everybody else, it's, yeah, it's a beautiful drop. And it is. Yeah, always one to, to go back to. Yeah. yeah. Great. Great.